How often do we feel frustrated about things? Sometimes things don't turn out the way that we expected them to. Sometimes something happens that we didn't see coming. And more often than not, we're just frustrated by the way that things are going, the way that the world is today. And it's only natural for us to want to take out that frustration on something, to let it out so that we don't feel quite so frustrated anymore. And maybe we even want to take out that frustration on God. We come to him with questions like, why did you let this happen, God? Why don't you do something about it? But then we tell ourselves that maybe we shouldn't talk to God in this way, that it's not right to question him, it's not right to get mad at God. And so we try to stop, we try to bury those questions and not ask them at all. But then we hold on to them and they start to fester within us and pretty soon that frustration turns into resentment and it becomes something worse than it was before. So what should we do then? How should we deal with these frustrations? Is it right to take out our frustrations on God or not? Well, Jeremiah in our Old Testament reading for today is actually a perfect example for us to consider because it's difficult to imagine a more frustrating life than his. Jeremiah lived during the fall of the southern kingdom. He watched with his own eyes the city of Jerusalem be conquered. He watched as the people of Israel were killed left and right. He watched as they were carried away into exile. Dealing with any of these things would be difficult enough, and it made it seem as if the promises of God were failing. Anybody would be frustrated in a situation like that. But his life was more frustrating still, because God called Jeremiah to be a prophet, to speak his word to his people. But God also told Jeremiah specifically that no one would listen to him. We're here in chapter 7, for example, God say to Jeremiah, so shall you speak all these words to them, but they will not listen to you. You shall call to them, but they will not answer you. How frustrating that must have been. It'd be like a teacher being told that their students would never learn anything, that no matter how hard they tried, nothing would ever change. Or a pastor being told that his congregation would not listen, that no matter how much he did, everything would stay the same. Jeremiah was basically being told that his labor would be for nothing, that no matter what he did, they would not listen. He would preach and they would turn away. And all he would be able to do was to stand by and watch watch as they stumbled and fell, watch as they bring judgment down upon themselves, watch as they go through all of these things knowing full well that they could have avoided all of it if they had just listened to him. It's a very frustrating thing indeed. And so it's not surprising then that Jeremiah complains to the Lord. This happens several times throughout the book of Jeremiah, and our Old Testament reading for today is one of them. Jeremiah in it is asking, what's the point? What's the point of all of this? I live in the midst of a faithless people, a people who refuse to listen. So what is the end of all of this? What good is it? What is even the point of living? He says, just before our reading in verse 10. Woe is me, my mother, that you bore me, a man of strife and contention to the whole land. I have not lent, nor have I borrowed, yet all of them curse me. Jeremiah complains and says, I have tried to do good, and it's brought nothing but trouble. I have done nothing evil, and yet they all curse my name. Jeremiah is a man who is deeply distressed, a man who is wondering why 
Why is all of this happening? Why was I not born at some other time? Why did I live to see such evil days? And so he cries out to the Lord, You know my troubles, Lord. Do something about them. Deliver me from my enemies. Give me vengeance against my persecutors. Give me relief in the midst of my distress. Because I suffer for you, God. I have followed after you. I have done everything you wanted me to do. I have delighted in your word. I have not turned towards evil. I have not rejoiced in what is false. And yet I sit alone, suffering for you. No one is coming to help me. No one is coming to set me free. As he says in verse 18, Why is my pain unceasing, my wound incurable, refusing to be healed. Now we may want to say at this point that Jeremiah shouldn't talk this way, that this isn't the right thing to do when coming to the Lord. And I think we might feel that because we live in a very self-reliant culture. The way that we deal with frustrations is by trying to ignore them and to simply move on past them. It isn't going to do any good if I complain anyway, we say. Nobody is going to listen to me. So just have a stiff upper lip, suck it up, move on, get past it. That's life. There's nothing you can do about it anyway. And because we tend to have that attitude towards our frustrations, we don't really understand why Jeremiah does what he does. But Christians, there is nothing wrong with what Jeremiah is doing here. There is no sin in complaining to the Lord. There is no sin in speaking to him in this way. Because we can see this all throughout the scriptures. There are many passages, especially in the Psalms, that talk to God in the same way, that complain to him, that even yell at him for something that has happened or something that has not happened. Let's just take the Psalms as an example. The beginning of Psalm 10 starts in this way. Why, O Lord, do you stand far away? Why do you hide yourself in times of trouble? Psalm 13 starts in this way. How long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? And Psalm 22 starts in this way. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me from the words of my groaning? We're not even that far into the Psalms yet. We're just up to Psalm 22. And there are many more like it throughout the entire book. All of them calling on God, all of them asking him why. Just like Jeremiah complaining to the Lord. And unless we want to say that all of these passages are somehow wrong, we can see that it is no sin to complain to the Lord. We can call out on him and voice these complaints to him, even using words that we might find shocking. We can let it all out and let him know what is on our minds. But yet we still hesitate don't we? And for a good reason. We all know of cases where somebody is mad at God. But because they're mad at God, they end up turning away from him and turning away from his promises. And we don't want to be like them. We don't want to go down that same path. So we have to ask the question, well, what is the difference then? When is it right to complain to God and when is it wrong? Well, Jeremiah shows us the answer to this too. Because Jeremiah in this passage actually takes things one step too far. Again, in verse 18, Jeremiah says, Will you be to me like a deceitful brook, like waters that fail? Jeremiah is using a picture here of brooks, some of the brooks in Israel which during the summer would co completely dry up. Is God going to be like one of those brooks? 
where he promises water but fails to deliver? Is God going to fail to keep his promises that he has made to his people? This is where the problem comes in. God rebukes him for this question. Because, and he says to him, if you return, he wants him to repent. Because what Jeremiah has done here is, well, the, what Jeremiah has done wrong here is not his complaining. We've already seen that that's okay. What Jeremiah has done wrong here is that he has doubted the faithfulness of God. And that makes all the difference. Because this complaining which turns into sin, is when we draw God himself into question, when our anger leads us to turn away from the Lord. Because we can see, even in the Psalms which complain, that they always keep their eyes fixed on God. They refuse to turn away from him. Let's take Psalm 13 again. That same Psalm will say in verse 3, Consider and answer me, O Lord my God. Light up my eyes, lest I sleep the sleep of death. The same psalm which asks why God is hiding. The same psalm which asks why God has forgotten them is the same psalm which now calls on God to answer. It refuses to turn away. And it will even end in verse 6 by saying, I will sing to the Lord because he has dealt with bountifully with me. So a godly complaining then, Christians, is a complaining which holds on to God and looks to him in all things. And an ungodly complaining is one which gets angry with God and turns away from him, doubting his promises and doubting his faithfulness. That is the difference between the two. But in those moments when we go one step too far, when our anger leads us to doubt the goodness of God, God still calls to us. He says in verse 19, If you return, I will restore you, and you shall stand before me. If you utter what is precious and not what is worthless, you shall be as my mouth. They shall turn to you, but you shall not turn to them. Turn back, God says. Come back to me. I will restore you. I will be with your mouth. I will give you strength. Even though they will not listen to you, I will still be with you. I will make you like a strong wall, one which cannot be broken down. For I am with you to save you and deliver you, declares the Lord. So Christians, it is good and it is right to pour out our complaints to the Lord, to lay it all out there before him, to say to God, God, I am angry, but I know that you can do something about it. God, I am frustrated but I know that you can bring me peace. God, I don't understand what's going on. It doesn't make sense to me. But I know that you work all things for good and that this also is meant for my good. And God, whose promises will never fail, will answer you because he is faithful and true. And what greater proof do we have of this, Christians, than Jesus Christ, his Son? Because if God gave us Jesus for the forgiveness of our sins, will he not also take care of us in all other things? And God has promised to hear us, even when we complain, in Jesus Christ. And Jesus gives us the Holy Spirit the Spirit who prays with us, the Spirit, the Spirit who prays in us, the Spirit who groans with us, with groanings too deep for words, the Spirit sighs and groans when we are in the midst of our distress and we don't know what to say. God is still with us 
and he will be faithful towards us in all things. Therefore, Christians, pour out your complaints to the Lord. Take it all to him. Unload your burdens on him. Because God can do something about them. Complain to him knowing that God will answer you. And you will find relief in the midst of all of your troubles. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, who gives justice to your elect, who cry to you day and night, deliver us from all of our troubles and set us free from the evils of this world because you are our loving Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.